let's talk about something that I see really, I think, is quite important, which is the separation of concerns. And we're going to talk about this in so many different levels because there is many levels. But specifically what I'm thinking about here is the separation of the domain model from, from how we implement the domain model. You know, we're dealing with the virtual world, the world inside a computer. It's, it's very, very different than the physical world. And so we have to take our ideas and our business rules and make them so that they have a representation in the virtual world. To do that requires implementation details, requires the minutia, the details about how to you know, display things on the screen and read things from a file and, and the other stuff that we do as programmers. But that's different. Those rules, those, that code is different than the rules around the business that we're trying to model. The business rules, whatever it is we're modeling, we could think of in a very pure way separate from the implementation details. And, and this is what I really want to encourage people to do because this is the first step in, in good design and good software. And it's one that a lot of people skip over. It's one that I don't see people talking about. So I'm going to harp on this a lot because it's so important. And, and I think that the deeper we go with it, the more valuable it becomes, which is, again, just the separation of concerns, the separation of implementation from abstraction because we want to create in the system, in our object-oriented programming, this is you know, the essence of OO. You can do it in other programming environments, but it's really how we should use object-oriented programming, which is to create a domain model of whatever it is we're modeling. You know? Something that is a pure representation of the business rules. And you know, there's a lot of value to having it in one place because you can, because business rules are likely to change if you haven't noticed. And having it in one place, and, uh, and when I say one place, I mean in one, in one, not necessarily a physical area, but in in one conceptual area, organized through abstractions and through hierarchies and etc. When when we have that, it more naturally models. The, the, whatever it is we're modeling, it more naturally represents our model. So our domain model is like a little map, you know, of of whatever it is that the process that we're modeling, a business process, it could be, you know, a multimedia, it could be a game, it could be anything, right? Whatever it is we're modeling, we create a pure model for it. And then later we think about, okay, how do we then implement that in terms of, you know, we have users and we have systems that are being used and probably we have back-end databases and et cetera, et cetera. So doing, thinking about things in, in the, this way, thinking about it in a, in a layered way along these lines, I find creates a far better separation of concerns. And then we have systems that are f far better segmented so that they're much easier to work with. And, you know, you don't have to be like Microsoft and and Google to be able to do this. Anyone can do this. And this is, I think, the right way to build software, even in the small, because it gives us flexibility. And you never know when a small little idea is going to grow into something bigger. You know, I, I think it's, I don't see builders, you know, who build buildings, uh, especially great buildings, <laughs> buildings that they're proud of go, eh, you know, I don't feel like putting the struts, you know, every, you know, three feet, I'm going to put it every six feet, because, uh, I'm just too tired today. You know, <laughs> there's laws around doing stuff like that. And, you know, although there are no laws around doing the right or the better thing in software development, we always want to strive to as professionals, right? So we should have some professional standards and practices. We should say, I'm a software developer. <laughs> and, you know, whatever it is for you. And, and for me, I actually... I have several things. Number one, I always build code that's testable. It's really important to me. And I also build a test first, so all my unit tests are there available with the code. I always spend time refactoring code and cleaning it up before I release it. And, and on a continuous basis, because I'm constantly learning and, and growing, and I wanna bring that knowledge back into my software. And it's fun. So. I think of software as this living thing, not as this static thing that you write once and that's it. But really, that's the essence of 
what I think is going to make our industry or break it. It's been the big thorn in our side ever since our inception of our industry of software, which is the idea that it's, you know, you write it once and you write your code and that's it. You know, you release it and, and it goes out in the wild and people use it. But what happens is people use it and they, they either like it or they hate it. <laughs> either they are using it and they like it or they're using it and they hate it or they're not using it at all. If they're not using it at all, well, it was too bad. <laughs> and that's the fate of most software, actually, that it doesn't ever get used or is highly underutilized. But the software that is used, almost guaranteed will be the people who are using it will want something different or want something changed because they'll realize that there's better opportunities that, that, that the software that they're using is helping them, but they could be helped better. And so the idea that you write it once and that no one ever needs to change it, I think is a fallacy. I don't see that really happening in industry. And, you know, I think that's why they came up with Agile in the first place. Agile means agile software. It means the ability for the software to change. And I love that, you know, people are taking it to heart and being agile and doing agile things and all. But, you know, the original ideas of agile was that the software is agile, the code itself, because that's the limiting factor. <laughs> we people are actually more flexible, you know. So making software that's flexible, that's what agile in my mind is about. And that requires technique. It requires building software in such a way that it is flexible. One of the most fundamental tenets is the idea of separation of concerns, which is what we're talking about here when we're talking about design. It's, it's a meta pattern in design, right? We want to separate anything we can from anything else in object-oriented programming. It's kind of like, it's one of the good things about doing OO is because, you know, you don't have to do many things in OO, many different things, but you have to do them a lot. <laughs> you have to break things down, but always keep breaking them down more and more and more until it's down to the smallest little component. We want our objects to be just not atom. Well, maybe atomic is a good word for our objects because uh, atoms are composed of subatomic particles in balance and, and in equilibrium. They're building blocks, though, and we want our objects to be building blocks. We want to use the ideas of composability. See, these are the ideas that I see emerging in industry and in, in the soft, software in business. Like the software companies that I know, the big software companies that you know, they're dealing with these ideas. With What do they model? They model things that, that require not building compilers. There's a, such a range of things in software development. It's, it's really like being a carpenter. And so, you know, carpenters don't specialize. They, they learn the tools and they learn the basic ideas and, and then they go out in the world and maybe as they practice, they specialize and get good in one area or another. They find what works for them and what doesn't. Software development is such a huge field. It's so much different than it was 20 or 30 years ago when, when professors were creating their college curriculums that really haven't changed very much if you look at it. And compilers, yeah, the, there's a lot of new ideas in compilers and it's very interesting for geeks like me. I love that stuff. But I don't see it that being that useful for most software developers. The ideas that we're going to be talking about, that we are talking about, I think are useful. I think are the important ideas. What is good design? Thinking about that and thinking about how do we make our code extensible? What are the practices that support that? How do we create vivid domain models? How do we make our code self-expressive so that when others look at it, they can understand it? Those are the things that like industries, disciplines that are forming are concerned with, right? That's what, you know, like medicine and the building industry or, or, or whatever industry was you know, these are mature, much more mature industries than ours. But if you think about the, the trial and error that occurs, there's a lot of trial and error, you know. <laughs> Look at, uh, you know, Notre Dame. that was like built and rebuilt four times before they figured out how to make, you know, so much stone be, you know, in the air. So we're just, we're just learning, but <laughs> we have to learn fast. And that's one of the tenets in the software industry, which is learn fast. Fail fast is how we call it. And th that is so critically important because, you know, <laughs> the way ideas propagate in society are usually generational. The old guard has to die off before the new guard 
actually can emerge and express the new ideas. We don't have that time. That's a luxury we do not have anymore. And so the cycle in software is getting faster and faster and faster. And that's good because we have to change fast. And I think this is one of the greatest things that we're giving as software developers in our industry to the rest of the world, which is the ability to change fast, both in the infrastructure to do that in software itself, but also in the way we're thinking about change and the way we're understanding how to create models and how to, how to reinforce and, and express our understandings in deeper ways. All of this is happening in our industry, and I think it's very exciting.